So, this is the orchard barn floor beam. Look at the state of the poor thing. Okay, we took a hundred mil off of it. So a hundred mil off the top. And this is what we find. Still in the middle where the spine beams were. It's really not that great that we can patch that. But much of what we've exposed now is good, solid, hard timber. And on this side, much more respectable finish anyway until we get to the middle. So the next bit cut is this red line here, which runs along to here, which will stop about there. So that will be a whole section cut out and then a vertical slab put on that face remove mostly this big check here and recreate this missing section here and tidy up a little bit of this here and then there'll be a deeper or the patch itself will be deeper and taller over this bit here. So this is the underside of the beam and you can see I've just marked another line to rip down to. And we're going to remove this very checked split section here up to there. As you can see, the underneath of the beam, which was obviously uh, covered by other components when it all collapsed, um, is in much better order. And this was adjacent to the ground floor and with the first floor and some of the roof and the undergrowth on the top of it, so it's a lot happier, a lot better condition. The worst bits inevitably are the connections at the ends and where we've rotted through in the middle um, where the peg holes were. There have been a peg hole about here, another one here, one there and one there for the spine beams that would go here and here. And obviously up this end again, we're missing the tenon, although you can just see the last vestigial remains of it here and the post, the gel post would be here. So this is the underside of that beam. These are uh, the lovely dry slabs of timber that we're going to use for some of our patch repairs. Probably just over half of this will go into the orchard barn beam. This is just over 100 mil thick. You can see it's a full tree width, what we call through and through slabs. So it's got a wany edge, that's bark and sapwood on one side, on each side and considerably long, this is just over 20 foot long and at this end is, I don't know, probably a, just over 3 foot wide uh, a really 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 big beautiful quality tree uh, ripped into multiple slabs and this has been drying for at least 6 or 7 years up in Lincolnshire okay and some of the tools that we're using uh, for some of the more recent rips I've been using this saw which will cut about 130 mil deep about 5 inches uh, when I've had to plane a flat surface, I've been using this power planer, which is just over 8 inches wide, 205 mil. And then earlier this morning, I was using this, this thing we call Big Bertha. Um, this saw will cut just shy of 8 inches in one pass, so that was doing my big rips earlier. These are all made by a company in Germany, uh, very high quality pieces of kit and cost an absolute fortune, but they're the only kind of things that would easily re-dimension timbers of this kind of scale. 
Okay, end of day one. Uh, a lot of my housings are chopped out on one face. Uh, we've got a, a housing that's going to have two steps in it. One about a third of the way along and one probably just over three quarters of the way along. Uh, cutting this in dry oak off of an irregular surface, not that easy with a circular saw. A nice base plate that wants to sit on something flat and true and square. So we tend to cut things a little bit over, or a little bit under what we want, uh, and then plane them up and tidy them out afterwards. So, not a bad day. Um, look at all the shavings and all the waste that we've cut off. So this is the stuff that uh, we're replacing. And even that, although it's got rotten outer surfaces and it's degraded back to a more organic shape and with splits and so on, actually the core material, once you get in, is, is very sound, very hard. Um, still, uh, this is the better face of our beam. Uh, so we'll be putting a patch uh, in here. I think uh, what we'll do is probably, probably something that comes down here across on this level where the mortise was and perhaps up here so we'll put a dry section of oak in there uh, and also in turn we'll probably put something in here like a plank in here to take up that void uh, because this is obviously the middle of the beam and we want it to flex as little as possible at this point it's got a point load from each of the two spine beams from each side uh, so any voids in this area or any significant voids are going to give it more likelihood to flex and move. So even this bit of recession here, we'll probably cut this down a little deeper, uh, square it out and set an inch plank or something in there. And over on this side, where there's this section where it's rotted out on the pith line on the heart, um, we'll probably cut at least from say here to somewhere over here and put a say a 50 mil square section in there. And again, we'll cut a, a patch out here um, and we'll certainly put a, a little slip inside there. So probably um, one, two, three, four, five, at least six or seven repairs in this one area. Um, and then at uh, each end, we'll have uh, a new tenon formed uh, where the historic ones are. Uh, so we'll also have to build this out as well. So there'll be a, a section of timber here, here and here. Uh, so three pieces plated together create uh, that solid beam again likewise up the other end so a significant amount of work at each end and a significant amount of work in the middle and this large slab that will sit on the top about 100 mil deep and this stepped slab that will sit on this face which i think is the south face um, that will run most of the length of it as well so quite a lot of work still to be done another few days yet i think Okay, I've just been working on a much smaller area today, cutting out a patch, and then a patch within a patch. And I've been using my multi-tool to dimension things, and my two trusty chisels to tidy things out nice and sharp. And I'm about to use some boat builder's adhesive uh, to glue in my first stage patch, my little patch here, which is this dry section which should fit into there which will glue in place and then when that's done I'll trim it up and we'll fit a patch into here and probably another patch onto here so much smaller surface area today Okay, all the clamps. But a very good fit.
making a start on the end of the beam uh, where we will put a new slab in here for the tenon which will be out here somewhere and a little extra section here. Uh, this section is all nice and cleaned up now so that's basically done and ready to be covered over by the subsequent patches. Okay, update. Here's our first tenon slab that's been cut and glued in place. Tomorrow I should be able to clean that off and run it down to size, make it look a lot better. Um, the full end of the beam comes to about here and then from this section here there'll be a large tenon cut uh, that fits into the post. All nice and cleaned up here. These look lovely, all nice and smooth. Um, that's all gone well. And over here, made a start on ripping out for a tenon at this end. It's a very deep, uh, large mortise. There's a little bit more tidying up to go. Uh, and then ultimately, I'll have a cut out here, remove some of that. And then this section here will probably be similar. I'm trying hard to keep this end if I can here. This is the original shoulder end. And of course underneath here we've got the last remnants of the chamfer stop. So I'm really trying as much as I can to keep this end intact. Around the other side it's not quite as good. It doesn't have to be perfect anyway. I mean it works by being connected uh, via the tenon and the support that it gains underneath here. So as long as we've got good bearing there and good connectivity here, this shoulder being perfect or not actually doesn't make that much difference. So as much as I can, I'll, I'll leave this alone. But I might, this patch might come across here. I'm not really sure. A lot of this stuff we do, we feel our way. Um, so, here we go. All looking pretty good. Couple of little patches. Okay, another quick update on how we're doing. This uh, scarf at this end is all cleaned up and that will form new timber for our tenon at this end. And then coming along to here, glued is another new slab section that will also provide a tenon at this end. Uh, this runs right through the current depth. Obviously we've still got 100 mil to put on the top. And then these triangular sections here and here, I'll be renewing them tomorrow and beyond. Um, but yes, the new tenon will be formed somewhere about here. Okay, so all gone well so far. I haven't actually spent a full day on it today. I've had lots of other things to try and sort out with this.